Good morning. Please enjoy this musical offering from Mary Snorick as we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. And good morning once again. Welcome to the 19th Sunday after Pentecost radio broadcast of Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Wadena, Minnesota. Today's radio broadcast is sponsored by Chris Olson in honor of all of those affected by this global pandemic, but especially the young people. Chris's heart has been moved for the young people in our area since March, thinking about how their lives have been disrupted, especially around school and sports. And our prayers are very much with our youth and all that they're going through today during this global pandemic. Thank you, Chris, for thinking of our young people and for your sponsorship, making this radio ministry possible today. Today in our readings, Jesus tells a parable about a wedding banquet and a special garment and uses the story to tell us something about the kingdom of God. And we will unpack that parable a little later in our radio hour together. Just a couple of announcements. If you are interested in connecting with us in person, you are welcome to be part of our Sunday morning sanctuary services. We are recommending that you attend one to two times a month, but we are not putting any formal limits on your attendance. You know what will work best for you. And so join us on Sunday mornings at 8.30 in our sanctuary. But we are asking for you to pre-register to help us better prepare to safely host you. And so you can pre-register for our Sunday morning sanctuary services by calling the church office, 631-2738, or you can visit wadinaemmanuel.org to register online. And of course, there's lots of other ways for you to connect with us and to one another through worship. You can watch those very same sanctuary services live on Facebook at 8.30 every Sunday morning. And we will continue to offer this full hour of radio worship together at 9.30 each and every week on KWAD, 9.20 a.m. We are hoping for at least one more parking lot service in three weeks, November 1st, which is All Saints Sunday at 10 a.m. That'll probably be the end of our parking lot services till it warms up again in the spring. But you can also be part of House Church. You can form a small group, and we will give you the resources that you need to cluster up with one or two other households on a monthly basis and share worship together in your homes. So wherever you're connecting, remember that the church is more than a building, that we are followers of Christ wherever God meets us and wherever God sends us. So be sure to check out wadinaemmanuel.org this week where you can stay connected, find links for all the stuff I've talked about this morning and more, visit wadinaemmanuel.org. Our music today was recorded at last Sunday's sanctuary service. We're grateful for Mary Snorick and Tom Colden for their music today. Our opening hymn 
is number 719 in your ELW hymnals, Where Cross the Crowded Ways of Life, ELW number 719. join our hearts and minds together in the prayer of the day. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all people and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our special music this morning was recorded last September by our Sanctuary Choir. Please enjoy their singing of Sovereign Land, today's special music.
Well, hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Small Talk, and I've got my friend Princess Piggly with me today. How are you, Princess Piggly? Well, for the most part, I'm so good, but I gotta know, how do I look? Well, Princess Piggly, you look, you look fine. What do you ask? Why, why do you ask? Well, I don't want to look fine. I want to look so good. I heard that today Jesus is telling a story about a big party that we're invited to. And I want to look so good. Well, you're right, Princess Piggly. That is the story that we're hearing today. But uh, I, I want us to think differently about how it is that we show up looking so good. It's not about how we need to dress up in our own clothes to look good. Oh, you mean I'm supposed to borrow someone else's clothes? Well, kind of. I I think that that we're going to hear today about the clothing of Jesus Christ, about how we can wear Jesus Christ. Uh, what now? Well, I guess what I'm saying is that when we're baptized... We get this wonderful garment to wear. Not literally, of course. Not, a, not an actual piece of clothing that we wear. But it means that when God looks at us, he doesn't see us so much as he sees his son Jesus. Oh, so to God, I look like Jesus? Yeah. His holiness, his blamelessness, his goodness, his faithfulness, it's all yours by faith. Ah, so does that mean when I wear Jesus like that, that I look so good? It does, Princess Piggly. In fact, when God looks at you, he sees his son, and he says, there's my beloved child, and I love her no matter what, and she always looks so good. That's right, Princess Piggly. So thanks for being here today, and thanks for helping us remember that when we are baptized, we put on Christ. And thanks to all of you for joining us today. We'll see you next time. Our first reading on this 19th Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 25, verses 1 through 9. I am reading from the New Revised Standard Version translation. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens will heat in a dry place. You subdued the heat with the shade of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 23. If you have a hymnal at home, please find Psalm 23 in the front of your hymnals preceding the hymn section, and read the indented sections with me. Psalm 
23 The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our second reading this morning is from Philippians, chapter 4, verses 1 through 9. Again, I am reading from the New Revised Standard Version translation. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge you, Odia, and I urge Sinteca, to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Dear friends in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Hey, uh, do you remember weddings? <laughs> Nowadays, we get a little skittish about weddings, uh, and per perhaps especially big weddings, and rightfully so. Big weddings are the perfect place for COVID-19 to spread. Lots of people from lots of places sharing hugs and handshakes, food and fellowship, laughter, maybe dancing. Such an event has super spreader written all over it. But remember about seven months ago when that wasn't the case? Remember when weddings were just huge, fun celebrations of love and family and the gathering of our, our best hopes and dreams for a couple just getting started in their life together? I know, it's hard to remember. I can Hardly remember it either, but if you try hard, I bet you can. And that's, that's the image I want you to hold on to today, the way, the way that weddings used to be, and one day will be again. You know, these, these must-attend events, important cultural, familial, even spiritual celebrations of love and blessing, and how when you're invited to such a special event, you most certainly will proudly attend. Because in our gospel reading today for Matthew chapter 22, Jesus tells a parable about this very thing, an extravagant wedding party thrown by the king for his son. And Jesus uses the parable to tell us more about the kingdom of heaven. Listen as I read from Matthew chapter 22 verses 1 through 7. Once again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. 
My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away. One to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his slaves, maltreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. What is Jesus saying here? The kingdom of heaven is like a wedding feast. That nobody who was invited bothered to attend. They were too busy. Too important. Some are even downright indignant. Even more, some of the invitees actually killed the slaves sent to summon them. This was way more than poor taste and bad manners here. These are people to whom the king said, You are important enough to me and my kingdom that I invite you to celebrate with me and my family this most important event. To be invited to such a banquet signified that these people mattered. And they threw it all away. So the king actually sends his army and destroys them and their city. One absurd action for another. Remember, this didn't actually happen. This is just a parable that Jesus tells. But in this story, one absurd action is exchanged for another. These people took their status in the kingdom and threw it away, just as so many hear about their significance in the kingdom of heaven and cast it aside for the empty treasures of this earth. Too busy, too important, too costly. So the king responded with something equally absurd. He destroyed them, destroyed their city. They acted like the king and his kingdom didn't matter, and the king responds in kind. But the parable, interestingly, goes on and continues to teach us about the kingdom of heaven. Reading on in Matthew 22, this time verses 8 through 10. Jesus continues, Then he sent, then the king said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. So as Jesus continues to tell this story, a remarkable turn of events takes place. If those invited cannot be bothered to attend, the king will send his servants into the streets to gather anyone they could find. Note this, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled. It was filled. It was, it was filled with some seedy characters. It had to be, the, the parable says, both good and bad. But the, but the wedding banquet hall was filled nonetheless. And apparently, we'll find out a little later in the story, each one of them was given a robe. Now, I'm not sure what these robes looked like, but they must have been nice. Right? They, they were, after all, intended for some pretty important guests. I'm imagining them, right? Fine, quality stitching, good fabric, right? Flowing, excessive, extravagant, the perfect gown for guests of the king at his son's wedding banquet. Imagine what it must have been like for this scurvy lot that was just dragged off the street to put those things on, right? Just common, ordinary, perhaps even what society would call indecent people in the, in the king's court, wearing clothes so luxurious and expensive. Right? Each one of them must not only have felt amazing, but probably a little self-conscious, a little bit out of place. As they ate the richest of foods, they drank the finest of wines, they were probably all just kind of waiting to be discovered by the king. Hey, 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 who invited this guy? Who invited this loser? Huh? They could just imagine the king coming up to them, exposing them in front of the whole group, right? And then throwing them out. But Jesus does something surprising in this story, as usual. In the parable, it's not the adulterer, the thief, the divorcee, the prostitute, who's called out and humiliated, even though such people no doubt were in attendance at this party. 
As we finish the reading here this morning, pay attention to who is called out. Jesus continues in verses 11 through 14. He says, But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Did you catch it? The one who's exposed, scandalized, and humiliated is simply this, the one not wearing the wedding robe. The whole room is full of people who are unworthy to be at such a fine party, and they all know it. But in only condemning the one without the robe, the king makes it clear that the rest of them are, in fact, right where they belong. Right where they've been invited and called to be. And so they cinch up their robes good and tight, and they enjoy the rest of the evening with confidence in the graciousness of this king. Now, you might object, hey, whoa, 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 let's back up and talk about this guy that got pitched out on his ear. That's no way to teach. That's no way to treat a guy. Right? Out on his ear because he was just wearing the wrong clothes. This parable we understand is is, uh, that the the king represents God. Then this doesn't really fit with our desire for a, a nice and friendly God. And a good, nice storytelling Jesus, right? Maybe so, this might not be very nice, but I do know this, God will cast the imposters out of his kingdom. That's right, God will cast imposters out of his kingdom. But I want to be clear, when I say imposters, I'm not talking about the immoral prostitutes, tax collectors, that whole list that we can make, you can make the list. When I say imposters, I mean the ones who show up in their own clothes as if to say, look at me, aren't I ready for a banquet? The ones who show up confident in their, in their worthiness because they earned it. As if the kingdom of heaven is lucky to have them. The ones who show up like that are in for a surprise. You didn't think you were getting into God's kingdom on your own good looks, did you? Friends, we have been invited to a banquet, God's heavenly banquet. And at times we might feel like the riffraff at the party in Jesus' parable. I mean, heck, we might even feel like we can't show up. This global pandemic has us scattered across time and space. And so as we, as we would, would, would desire to be part of worship, this great dress rehearsal for the kingdom of heaven in eternity, we feel like the whole thing's broken. Right? Some of us gather in a sanctuary, but others have to gather on Facebook or on YouTube or on the radio, or others have to gather in a parking lot or in small groups we call house church. And as we gather, most of the time we can't sing together. In our daily lives, we might feel like we're barely holding it together these days. We're divided politically with our neighbors. We don't have any idea how to slow the spread of this deadly virus. And we feel lost and disheveled and we feel like failures. And So how would we even begin to show up at this great amazing banquet that that God puts on? We feel like frauds. And I've been there myself many days. Wondering how long it will be before someone realizes what a fraud that I am and I get shown the door. Or maybe as we're watching a video or listening on the radio, there's a message that comes on that just says, sorry, you're not even qualified to listen to this service, to watch this sermon on video. We're all waiting to be exposed as frauds. But but here's the good news, my friends. Like the robes given to the attendees in Jesus' parable, we've been given new clothes to wear too. Clothes we put on even today in this dress rehearsal, wherever you're gathered attending to God's word right now. Then that clothing is Jesus Christ. 
It's my absolute favorite verse about the clothing of Christ. Galatians chapter 3. As many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves in Christ. Right? You've, you've heard me. If you've heard me preach for more than a few years, you've heard me prattle on about this verse before, but I cannot resist talking about it again. It's just one of my favorites. Baptism gifts us with the clothing that is Christ himself. And it's a great verse. And it's a great set of clothes. Right? This is the wedding robe given to us by God himself. We put on the garment of Jesus Christ. No matter how out of place we might feel, no matter how dislodged from community we might feel because of this global pandemic, no matter how much we might feel like failures and imposters, this clothing makes it right. Right? We might gather wherever we gather, feeling like our shortcomings and our frailties and our foolishness and our sin define who we are, but they do not. God will not walk up and show us the door because we who have been baptized have clothed ourselves with Christ. Right? When we wear that gracious gown, we can stand in God's presence with confidence, knowing that we are right where we belong. Now, I know that some people might prefer other garments. Some might prefer to show up in a garment made of their own credentials, their own accomplishments, their own status, their own holiness, their own importance. But as I listen to Jesus today, I've got to say I don't recommend showing up in those clothes. I don't recommend skipping the banquet either. Right? Find some way, shape, or form to attend. Virtually, in person, however. But gather in the presence of God, confident in your status and who you are. Forget about the other clothes. Forget about those other commitments and excuses. You've got a wedding feast to be, far, to be, you've got a wedding feast to be part of. And new clothes besides, right? Beautiful, extravagant, luxurious clothes stitched together with the blood of Christ, lined with grace and forgiveness and newness of life. Come, one and all, to the heavenly banquet. Again, no matter how you come, in person, on Facebook, via YouTube, on the radio, come and gather around God's word. Gather at this banquet, which begins right now. Right? It might not look like much of a banquet now, the way we've gathered, but it is God's banquet. Gather. Right? The, the, the banquet begins now and will work up to its fullness in the kingdom that is yet to come. Come young and old, come rich and poor, come healthy and sick, come broken and lost, condemned and ashamed, put on the wedding garment which is Christ himself. Come and be covered with his love and grace and stand before God as a new being in Jesus Christ. When you put on Christ, you are invincible, my friends. Neither death, nor troubles, nor sorrows, nor anything this world can dish out, including a global virus, can prevail. Neither with the errors and poor judgment of your past, the wedding garment covers all. And so put on Christ and live confidently as a child of God, a child of this merciful God. Who wants nothing more than this, that you would live your earthly days confident in his abiding presence. And that each day brings you closer to your eternity with him and his son at the wedding feast. This feast that has no end. So put on Christ and let the peace of God which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. And of course, dear friends in Christ, we continue to give thanks to God for your faithfulness and your generosity. Your financial gifts make our ministry possible, whether that's ministry that's happening here on the radio, on Facebook Live, in our sanctuary, through house church, and through other ways. Your gifts make it possible. You can continue to send your gifts to P.O. Box 69 in Wadena, Minnesota. You can drop your gifts off at the church. And you can visit wadinaemmanuel.org to explore electronic giving options. Our service continues with hymn number 800 in your ELW hymnals, Spirit of God, Descend Upon My Heart, ELW number 800.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love, through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Together we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us join together to pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. God of tenderness, we pray for a world crying out to feel safe, to feel seen, to feel loved and cherished. Send us your spirit to help those battling depression and mental illness and for the loved ones supporting them on their journey. May the gifts of the Holy Spirit guide them so that your presence may be seen in a new light and that they may feel the warmth of being wrapped in the arms of your love. Lord, in your mercy. God of radical love, give us the courage to believe in the plans you have for us and the strength to not give up on each other. In these challenging times, send your Holy Spirit to be our strength as we dismantle hate and work to heal the wounds that fear and hate create. Give us the courage to speak your love everywhere we go and to everyone we meet. Lord, in your mercy. God of comfort, be with those who are sick, hospitalized, or terminally ill. We pray especially today for Sherry Anderson, Charles Carlson, Mary Lee Coates, Edna Honeycutt, Gary Johnson, Rick Johnson, Peggy Lewin, Jerry Ullman, Diana Olson, Craig Reese, Dorothy Teal, Dennis Teedy, Heather Beldo, Gary Burnt, Joan Clark, Jerome Fisher, Doreen Johnson, Robert Kiffey, Kia Nurberg, Jean Tolokson, Betty Wiederich, Dick Wood, Eugene Wood, and Dolores Yorick. Bring healing, love, and hope into the lives of these we have named aloud, as well as those we carry with us in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of life and death, be with those who are dying and those grieving the loss of a loved one. Bring hope and peace, especially to the friends and family of Caleb Hagen, to Donna Christine and family in the death of Donna's husband, Leroy Christine, and to Joe and Lois Hollerman and family in the death of Joe's son, Michael Hollerman. Give us hope in the resurrection of the dead and life everlasting in the name of your son. Lord, in your mercy. God of strength, continue to give wisdom and courage to our leaders, local leaders, state leaders, national and world leaders too. Strengthen them in the difficult task of leading in these treacherous days. May they all be led by your wisdom and strength as they work for the greater good while protecting our most vulnerable. Lord, in your mercy. God of protection, strengthen teachers, medical workers, firefighters, first responders, and those who serve in our military. Bless and keep, O Lord, Max Labar, James Close, Victor Barbado, Joel Bertelson, Sean Evans, Joel Holwiger, Samantha Holwiger, Carson Jennings, John Close, Eric Neely, and Jacob Radebo. 
Give all who serve courage to work with grace and integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting that when we forget, you do not forget. We give these prayers of our congregation to you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, who reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please take a moment now to share peace with those gathered in the room with you, or take this time to reach out to those you are connected to electronically and call or text or snap or email them and share a word of peace with those gathered with you in spirit this morning. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Please enjoy our closing hymn, ELW number 767, Lord, Take My Hand and Lead Me, ELW number 767. for worshiping with us today on the radio. Join us every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. right here on KWAD 9.20 a.m. for a full hour of worship. Or you can be supported in faith through our digital offerings on YouTube and Facebook. You can also worship with us in our sanctuary and in our parking lot. We even have an exciting house church ministry that you can be part of. Visit wadinaemmanuel.org for all the details.